kind of like this. Well, do you like good music? Oh, that sounds like a song. Did you know that the Gulf Coast <laughs> is home to the biggest festival for songwriters in the country? And the founder of that festival may be familiar to you. That's right. Now, when we come back, I'll be talking with Joe Gilchrist, the man who started it all nine years ago. Nine years ago today, our guests decided to gather together the best songwriters from all across the country. Now, that gathering was called the Frank Brown International Songwriters Festival. It was named in honor of a man who worked for many years at the Florabama on the Alabama-Florida line. Now, today, we have as our guest the proprietor of that establishment, Mr. Joe Gilchrist. Joe, first of all, let's explain who Frank Brown was. Well, when I took over the Florabama in 1978, uh, an old night watchman there was Frank Brown, and... He, uh, I didn't realize how old he was until a couple of years later. He said, well, I'd already said, I always said when I got to be 85, I was going to retire. And I, but he stayed on there until he was 91 and taught us all a lot, and he was a real inspiration to us. So, so he wanted to keep you this named up. the festival, which is a songwriter's festival, in honor of Frank Brown, even though he wasn't a guitar picker or a songwriter. No, but he was a neat character, and we kind of appreciate characters there. Okay. Starting this Thursday on the 4th of uh, November, it gets underway. And when I say it, I'm talking about a gathering of the best songwriters around. I was there last year. That doesn't mean I'm a good songwriter, but I got to see some really good songwriters. Now, tell me about what's going to go on this weekend. Well, actually, we're even going to start up a little bit Wednesday with a teaser. Mickey Newberry, who's a, a legendary writer and, and uh, hall, songwriter Hall of Fame writer, is going to do a concert Wednesday night. But... Starting Thursday, we're going to have writers not only locally that, that haven't achieved uh, great success yet, but are good writers mixed in with people who've got number one hits now and mixed in with legends that have written number one hits 30 years ago. People have written for Willie Nelson and mm -hmm. Waylon Jennings and Ray Charles. Garth Brooks, the writer. Uh, Mr. Pat Alger's coming in. I, you That's didn't right. know I was going to do this, but I, I got to talk to Mickey Newberry recently, and this is what he said when I asked him, does he do this just for fun? Just doing this for fun, right? Yeah, I really am. Yeah. Uh, this is the only place really, but, but basically, I'll tell you the truth is, I think Joe Gilchrist probably got me performing uh, again. Mm -hmm. Because I hadn't performed before that for many years, except for a few charitable events, you know. I play a lot of, a lot of uh, celebrity golf tournaments and things like that, but I mean, you get up and do two or three songs, and, and that's it, you know. And uh, coming down here fired me back up. Yeah. It was not just um, the area, it's the, uh, it's, it's the music. The best music I've heard in 20 years is here. It certainly is here, right on the Alabama-Florida line. Now, not only the Florabama is one of the locations for what's going on this weekend, but other locations are what? Right, uh, Zeke's and Perdita Beach Resort near the Florabama, and six other locations in, between Pensacola and, uh, and the Gulf Shores area. And we're just... Not to mention the fact we're going to have a Legends of Songwriting concert on Saturday the 13th that will bring some of the magic names all together in one place for a concert. And on the weekends, uh, put out by BMI and ASCAP, will be seminars on songwriting and basically the business of music. Yeah, we're real pleased to have both uh, BMI and ASCAP help us. They're bringing a first-class group of people down. ASCAP seminar will be Saturday the, uh, at 2 o'clock, and the other, the other one will be the 12th at... Okay. which is Friday at 2 o'clock. Okay, we've got a little reminder of you for you. The Perdido Key Orange Beach area is where it will all be going on. It starts this Thursday and actually goes on for 10 days. And as Joe mentioned, we're going to have a little teaser Wednesday night at Floor Bama with Mickey Newberry is going to be there. We're real proud to have him and other writers, too. Okay, Joe, thank you for coming over. Thank you. All you know it all lover, better keep some advice. Well, in November, when the sun starts hiding behind the clouds here in Middle Tennessee, the songwriters head south to the beaches of northwest Florida and the golf courses of South Alabama. People like Jerry ball Kerrigan, ball. who's played drums on more top ten records than he can remember. Now this ball is going to go there. Yeah, we're not, not don't swing fast, don't duck up And guitarist and songwriter Wayne Carson, whose credits include You Were Always On My Mind and the rock and roll standard, The Letter. My dad had left me a whole bunch of stuff little ideas and stuff for songs and things like that. He says, you can just have this. I'm never going to do anything with it. And he never did. You know, he was a thinker. I mean, he would, he was a dreamer. He had a song, uh, a song, it was a book. Mm -hmm. And way down about the third page and down about the fourth paragraph, it said, a ticket for an aeroplane. And I thought that was, because <laughs> he had spelled it out, A-E-R-O-P-L-A-N-E. Yeah. 
And I thought, that isn't that interesting now? <laughs> so I sat right down at the organ. I started playing these changes. And the A minor, F, G, D. I thought, boy, that's nice. That's nice. Give me a ticket for an aeroplane. Ain't got time to take a fair train. Long as it's a go, I'm a going home. My baby is a old man then I... How long did it take you to finish it? It just sort of came out. It, 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 it really literally in, in about less in half the time it takes to really sing the song as you know it now. It was written. It just wrote itself. Just boom, it was there. Songwriters looking for success head for their musical mecca. And here in Music City, USA, Nashville, Tennessee, the songwriter meets the publisher, and hopefully the publisher will find a singer. The right singer and the right song can spell hit as an achy, breaky heart, with over 9 million in sales and the most performed country song of 1993. Singer Billy Ray Cyrus talks of writer Don Von Tress. Not only is Don a great songwriter and a singer and a performer, but the guy is also a very, very kind human being. Don Von Tress, it's just an honor to know you. I love you, man. Musical outlaw Waylon Jennings also knows the importance of the songwriter. One of the greatest satisfactions in the world is writing a good song. And uh, it doesn't sound like it sometime now, but still, the heart and soul of our entire business, it's uh, the most important thing is the song. You don't care how good a song or a singer you are, if you haven't got a good song, you're in a lot of trouble. Well, anything you want to tell uh, Mickey or, or Sonny? Yeah, I'd quit uh, stealing my lines before I think of them. <laughs> In the hit country song, Lukenbach, Texas, when Waylon Jennings sings of Hank Williams' pain songs and Newberry's train songs, he's singing of Mickey Newberry. I got to talk with Mickey recently and ask him, how does it feel to be immortalized this way? That's, it, it feels kind of funny. It makes me feel old. <laughs> A legend. But I am old. <laughs> uh, there are no legends. Legends until you're dead, you know. I was talking to Willie Nelson about that here a while back, you know, I said, this, uh, everybody's a living legend these days, you know? No such thing as a living legend. If they, if they speak your name a hundred years from now, you may be called a legend. Stephen Foster is a legend. I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. Well, Lord, Lord, the Kenny Rogers song, uh, Just Checked In, uh, how did that come about? I was sitting in a, a bar in Houston. The bartender's name was Goosby, and the air conditioning unit had gone out. And I said, Goosby, I said, it sure is hot in this place. He said, well, let me go check the condition of my conditioner. Well, I try to introduce my friends to this place because it reminds me of the spirit in Nashville in the early 60s. And that's why I left. That spirit was lost. And I tried to tell the writers, friends of mine, look, you know, get back to where, what made you write in the first place and you'll write again. When songwriters get together, they have what's called a guitar pull. When each person performs songs, she or he has written.
Most of the writers come from all across the country. Jim Hurt, who's written several hits, doesn't have to drive far since he lives on Perdido Key. And how did he get here? Whoa, now there are the stories for you. <laughs> Mickey Newberry told me, uh, uh, what was it, about a year or two ago, a year and a half ago, there was a place uh, on Perdido Key down in Florida on the Gulf of Mexico that was just a remarkable place for songwriters and creative people, and uh, that I should be there, involved with that. When Jim Hurt or Mickey Newberry or any other well-known writer needs a little musical help, another local, Luther Womble, has pick and does not have to travel. Since I've been here, I've, I've, I've played, just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in with, uh, with Mickey Newberry. I've played The Letter with Wayne Carson. I've played Gentle On My Mind with John Hartford. I could go on all day. And for a guitar, primarily a guitarist, where are you gonna get that? How, when you, how, where are you gonna get that opportunity? I mean, it's amazing. In the past month, I've found that musicians and songwriters are split on where they'd like to live. Wayne Carson hasn't moved to the coast, but he definitely loves the area. And then everybody's treating me so damn friendly. I thought, man, I got to go back down there. So I've been coming down here periodically every time I get a chance. To just... John Anderson likes the beach atmosphere and visits as often as he can. You don't one day you're On the other hand, Nashville represents the better place to Hal Newman. There are a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of songwriters here. And I've never been in a community where everybody has the same desires and the same goals. And uh, we all want to do the same thing. And, and, I, and I was one of the few people that wanted to do it everywhere else. I'm among the many up here. The local chambers of commerce ought to hire Mickey Newberry. Coming down here fired me back up. Yeah. It was not just um, the area, it's the, uh, it's, it's the music. The best music I've heard in 20 years is here, right here in this area. So if you can stand the cold or the heat of increased competition, Nashville is your place. While mild winters and a climate of creativity is calling some to relocate along our beaches. Come on, come on. 